Afternoon all. I thought we could have a look at another game of Max Over from the Amateur World Championship of 1928. Um, a few more of these then we can have a look at the world, first World Championship match encounter he had with um, Alexander Alekine, uh, or Lekin. I've just seen a documentary and it's actually, uh, Over is actually pronouncing Alekine's uh, name similar to um, Dr. Alekin. Alekin. Okay, so anyway, moving on. So Becker as White kicks off with e4. There's some information around Becker. He's, he's quite a, a good player. Uh, on chess games, com, there's some information. He was um, awarded the IM title in 1953, actually. Uh, he was the Austrian champion in 1925. Uh, so this is three years after that. He was second at Vienna in 1927. Um, and actually... Uh, this this is the their earlier encounter in the very next year um they played again um and i'll tell you the result at the end of this game of of of, of that game game's results let's not spoil the results just yet so uh becker's a good player and um okay so e5 from max after knight f3 knight c6 we see the royal of has after a6 bishop a4 Knight f6, a solid system as black in the Royal of Pairs. After castles, black takes on e4. Okay, fairly standard move nowadays. d4, and now b5. Black has uh, a very solid occupation of the center still, still, and a very nice knight on e4 here at the moment. d takes e5, bishop e6, reinforcing d5. c3, and now bishop e7. Okay, bishop e3, black castles. It looks all fairly standard opening theory. And this is way back in 1928. The Royal Lopez is a is a highly analysed theoretical opening, of course. Um, and black uh, has this system worked out to get a good position. Okay, so knight takes d2, queen takes d2, and now knight a5. White preserves the light square bishop, pointing at the king here. Knight c4, queen d3, threatening mate. g6. Bishop c1, preserving the dark square bishop, and not wanting to go in with bishop h6 at the moment. Okay, that might fail tactically. In any case, the knight takes b2 there. We'll have a quick peek at that. Uh, I think black can just get away with knight takes b2 in this position. Queen moves and then move the rook, uh, so that would be uh, not so good, I think. Um, okay, so bishop c1 is played now. Bishop f5 gets rid of white's light square bishop, so I think black is uh, on the verge of being equal here. Now f6. Okay, bishop h6 is played, shifting the rook off the f file because if rook f7 there's e6. Rook has to go to e8, okay, it seems. e takes f6, bishop takes f6, right. So white still seems to have a good position here. Black reinforces uh, the d5 pawn. Now knight d4. Okay, but uh, white is faced with black, you know, occupying that, that e5 with the rook. Is he going to challenge the e5 rook? Queen d7. Actually, he goes in uh, for a bit of an attack now. Instead of trying to uh, contest the e file, which might be the more uh, prudent approach, white plays rook d3 here. Uh, let's just quickly get uh, an engine evaluation. It seems um, a bit risky, uh, rook d3. There seems to be, a, okay, it's about equal anyway. But, um, okay. It's what, it's what happens after. Rook e4, rook g3. So white is sort of putting more pressure on g6 now. Uh, okay, <laughs> there's a lot of resources pointing at black's king here. But uh, black just claims that e file now with rook a e8. I mean, I'm pretty sure the evaluation has just gone up for black because he's just given uh, possession of the file, really. If we, if we just got an evaluation here, is it higher than four? It is. I mean, I think maybe rook d3 is starting off on a bad foot and then continuing in that vein, just going for the king. You see that occupation of the file. I think black stands very well now. 
this this is great flexibility to occupy the open file and lots of entry points to attack both queen side and king side and the the, the question is is defensive resources uh, and if g6 is going to be a, a problem if if there's going to be a rook g6 maybe at some point but um okay at the moment uh, f f3 i think is is ruled out here i don't think f3 is actually uh possible uh possibly let, let's check it out but i think rook e2 might even be possible because rook g6 maybe there's king h8 but let's let's actually check this out why f3 is not possible okay bishop takes d4 now rook e2 okay so actually here uh, there's there's no uh, there's no rook g6. I think this is this is harmless. Okay, this this is a harmless situation. It'll be defended in any case. Okay, so for the moment let's let's, let's go back here. So f3 f3 is not on the card. So white chases the knight instead, and now actually in this position, the sign to play f3. Okay, and we still get this mechanism taking on d4 first. Than getting the rookie two in, and um, just just black rooks are just more flexible than white. This is committing, uh, leaning over, rather awkwardly. It's like standing on one foot to try and attack the opponent's king. Whilst whilst black is perfectly um, control of the center is perfect, much more stable base. If there's no rook g6, there shouldn't be a big problem here. Uh, so this this looks like another game that we've seen recently in this evolution series, where as as black it seems, Max is getting uh, positional trump cards as a kind of side effect of his opponents in this championship, uh, going for his king. And this 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 much more stable position black has control of that that uh, e file uh, is going to give opportunities. So knight f5 now, and this this bishop's you know attacked as well as d4. It's awkward. To defend this position now is white. White tries rook g4, okay, because the bishop is is protected by the queen at the moment. But he's losing that a2 pawn. He still goes in for his attack. So all all is invested in this attack now. But these these rooks can can be versatile. They're doubling now on g2. So the question is 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 black having time for his attack? Uh, but you think because both rooks are involved. Uh, and this looks an awkwardly placed rook, and this rook's not really doing anything. Um, hasn't black got uh, the extra time uh, to do something here? In the game, king h1 uh, was played, but let's have a look if black was faced with h5 in this position. What would actually occur if h5? Okay, taking here. So say queen takes. Oh, we have queen takes g4, just celebrating the, both of the rooks on the seventh. We get a neat uh, standard mating pattern. So that just shows, you know, black's black's control of of that centre file. We're given free of charge from white when he started going on the wrong foot uh, with with rook d3, rook g3. Has now culminated in in these um, in these very strong tactical combinations. So white is um, having to be cautious now. Of this knight h6 and queen g4 mechanism, so he plays um, king h1, and okay, which avoids rook takes g2 being check in in this sequence, this forcing sequence. But black does take on h6 anyway, and instead of queen g4 here, um, which which is not working in this position, um, clearly it's not actually because black black would be getting mated. <laughs> On f8, no, but there is actually a tactical move that Max uses instead, still celebrating uh, both of the rooks on the seventh rank. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you ten seconds, starting from now. Okay, rook takes g2, and this is neat, you know, because if, um, well. It's neat because let's rule at h5. We still have this fast mechanism of check, and now taking here would would be mate, um, as well as um, if if we play uh, rook takes g2 here, 
than Queen H3. Black's just quicker because he had the greater versatility. His attack's just quicker to get to White's king. But White is playing like without that rook. You know, Black's got both his rooks going in for all these tactical variations involving uh, mating White's king. So, okay, so this this is looking dire now for White. White tries Queen F4. Now, actually, Max is not going to give up both his rooks for the queen in this position, although that does seem quite tempting. Um, he plays, actually, rook takes g4, believe it or not, allowing white to even put both pawns together. He just wants queen e7 in this position, preventing mate, and also he wants to just exchange off queens. Um, after h5, okay, he doesn't immediately rush to exchange off queens here, because maybe taking an h6 offers white a dangerous fawn pawn. Um, well, he actually first takes on h5, and after takes now queen e4. So he's just guaranteeing himself a, a, a nice ending with the ability to create an outside pass pawn. And actually, uh, if we go over some other games from this championship, you'll see this theme being repeated, just just going in for a safe ending with an outside pass pawn, because in a in a way his, his opponents it's like outside of their interest zone. They're going for his king. The last thing they're thinking about is is an ending losing because of an outside pass a pawn. But uh, you'll see this theme being repeated. So uh, queen takes e4, d takes, and now this this rook and pawn ending. Yes, it's it's dire for white. Um, it doesn't matter how well White plays from here, it's just a dire end game to transition to. Uh, so we have this outside pass pawn where it's it's really just a question of not losing both these pawns. These both these two connected pass pawns are very strong. They're supporting each other. Uh, and now the rook can just come behind that pawn and here it's just winning, B2 winning. Um, so in terms of style, but I, I don't want to uh, I'm not trashing Becker. In fact, we can have a look at the next year where Becker gets revenge. Actually, I'll say now, Becker got revenge the next year with a very nice attacking game on Max. So even with this apparently one-dimensional style, which which Max ha was exposed to in this game, you know, sometimes it does it does beat uh, of Max Over's style. Uh, around this time on the lead up to 1935 and I think in fairness yes in fairness um, we, we should have a look at that revenge game just just for those interested in in the next year in 1929 but let's let's just have a look at this and overview in, in summary again the, the one dimensional approach after the opening of go, going for the Black's King did, did commit a lot of white resources and a, a bit of loss of coordination and flexibility of white's resources, the way this attack uh, was conducted. Um, even though it seemed uh, in, in some way that um, that black had, had some weaknesses, if he's got the ability to exchange off um, the light square bishop with bishop f5, that's, that's also very nice because that's taking a lot of the attacking venom out of white's position. Um, he slightly weakens his king's field though with f6, getting rid of white center. But you can look at this as a positional prelude to just trying to occupy that e file and get that flexibility with both rooks working in both directions to sort of create tactical combinations later. That's really what we we witnessed here. And so, some, you know, this this rook a d1 idea with knight d4, rook d3, the rook lift looks very ambitious and maybe is not treading too carefully here. Uh, so knight d4 clearing that third rank for the rook lift. It looks dangerous because a bishop's planted here and black has weakened the position, but he wanted that positional trump card. It's kind of subtle sometimes how a positional trump card does translate later into an attack here, how you go from this, this control of the central file uh, to have attacking implications. Um, and it needs good tactical skill to 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 exploit uh, the positional trump cards. Otherwise, black may may well have end up uh, getting hacked. Basically, um, so here, black black's not getting hacked uh, just yet. Um, if white wants to play f3, it is at a big positional cost of bishop d4 and rook e2. This infiltration into the seventh 
uh, rank, um, which would which would be quite unpleasant. So here, uh, the knight w was taken back, but it's given you know also a nice option now. Knight f5 coming up. So f3, it just it just pastes White's position to the to the end. Actually, the f3 move here. Can White actually, for those interested, reassemble uh, the position here? Or is it really too late? It looks as though it might be too late, but say the rook just 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 went backwards and swallowed its pride. Uh, could black actually contest, uh, you know, that central file? Well, possibly. You see the evaluation not going uh, too high. If if white can just get rid of a pair of rooks, that might change the picture and try and defend this. It might actually be, you never know, a tenable position. Although, you know, it's 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 certainly not as bad as the game. So in in the game, we we do see the true horror of both rooks on the seventh uh, being revealed here. So one rook coming in with tempo, and then snatching a pawn, ready ma making way for the e2 square for the other rook. And once we get both rooks on the seventh, then we get these pretty strong combinations just in time to save Black's king uh, from an onslaught. So we see knight h6 and queen g4 just in time resource. Uh, you know, using the, both of the rooks on the seventh, um, you might actually consider um, rook e1 as as a defensive try. I think knight takes h6 is strong, but no, let's let's actually check rook e1 here as well. In case you're wondering, well, was there anything apart from uh, king h1? Okay, taking oh, it's, it just loses the bishop. Pardon me, just loses the bishop. So white cannot cannot contest the file here, so king h1 might actually be one of the better moves in the circumstances now. The damage has really been done, uh, the positional trump card now becoming a fearsome aggressive trump card of both rooks on the 7th, which it seems an un untenable uh, pressure um, now. So rook takes g2, okay, so he's, he's two pawns up now. And then he doesn't mind simplifying here. Um, just out of interest, rook h2, I think also, I can't see the rooks uh, coordinating. Rook h2 might also be a good move here. Because in this in this particular situation, can the rooks really coordinate against the queen and two pawns? I think the queen could could, could do very well here with, with the um, the outside pass pawns. This is still better for black. But the way he played it was, was it much more clear cut I guess um, just just going for the Queen exchange very difficult to do anything about a full exchange if Rook F2 then Queen E1 check just take everything off then A5 will win with, with that passed outside pawn or just coming in here for Queen E4 okay so um, it's just a hopeless ending uh, which uh, White has uh, with the outside pass pawns now uh, but yeah an interesting Interest of fairness. Uh, let's let's uh, have a look at the revenge game of these two um, next in the next year of 1929. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.